aerodynamics of vortex flows originates from the development of high-speed military aircraft following the Second World War. Before this, aircraft such as the P-51 Mustang, Supermarine Spitfire, and Messerschmitt Bf-109 were the state of the art. These subsonic, unswept, tapered wing aircraft would soon be replaced by a new generation of supersonic delta wing jets. Among the advances that took place during this time, one notable one was the adoption of thin, highly swept delta wings. The arrival of this innovation was marked with many challenges. The one I will focus on here is that delta wings brought concerns regarding their low speed operation. Due to the low aspect ratio of these wings, it was believed that they would have a greatly diminished low speed lift curve slope. Take for instance the aforementioned P-51 Mustang and a new generation YF-102A, also known as the Delta Dagger. The P-51 has an aspect ratio of around 6, whereas the YF-102A has an aspect ratio of around 2. This translates to a lift curve slope which is cut in half when assuming both wings have the same flow physics. This would make landing the aircraft extremely difficult and dangerous as the landing speeds would need to be very high, or the aircraft would need to approach at a very high angle of attack to generate sufficient lift. The discovery of leading edge vortex flows, along with some clever engineering, largely alleviated these concerns. Solution 1. The Droop Nose The Droop Nose is a solution to the problem that arises from delta wing aircraft landing at very high angles of attack. The angle of attack, coupled with the long nose associated with supersonic aircraft, makes it so the pilot cannot see the runway during landing. The solution first implemented on the Ferry Delta II was to use a droop nose. As the name suggests, this allows the nose of the aircraft to droop or pitch down relative to the rest of the aircraft. This way the pilot can see the runway on approach, but the nose is up in the most aerodynamic configuration for flight. In my opinion, this is quite an elegant solution and is best seen on the Concorde. Solution 1.5, Variable Incidence Wing. Much like the droop nose, variable incidence wings attempt to allow pilots to see the runway even at high angles of attack. This method involves pitching the wings up relative to the rest of the aircraft. The image on top shows the Vought F-8 Crusader with its wings pitched up, and the image below shows the plane with the wings flush for flight. Solution 2. Variable Sweep Wing The second solution was the introduction of the variable sweep wing. This method promises the benefits of a non-swept wing at low speeds, and the benefits of a highly swept wing for higher speeds. Although this method does address the concerns, it introduces new issues as well. The most obvious concern is the added weight and cost associated with the increased complexity. More subtle concerns also arise, such as the moving center of lift, changing trim conditions. The two aircraft shown, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat and the Rockwell B-1 Lancer address this issue by moving the pivot point out to minimize the effect and by having large tail stabilizers. This solution does deliver on its promises, but the added complexity likely means that it will be limited to military aircraft. Solution 2.5, Oblique Wing. An interesting variation on the variable sweep wing is the oblique wing, which promises to address the aforementioned concerns. This wing is mounted on a central pivot about which it rotates the variable sweep angle. The interesting characteristic about this design is that one side will sweep forward and the other backwards because the wing itself is one piece. This design is said to greatly reduce the complexity and maintain a constant center of lift as the wing is swept. The most notable implementation of this concept was the NASA 81 designed by Burt Rutan. This aircraft was shown to be capable of sweeping its wing from 0 to 60 degrees and the associated test program lasted between 1979 and 1982. Other concepts include the Northrop Grumman Switchblade. Solution 3. The Modern Fighter Modern fighter jets use complex wing geometries incorporating highly swept delta wing sections near the root and more moderately swept regions beyond that. This coupled to very authoritative control surfaces and complex control algorithms opens their flight envelope to moderate and high speed operation. But what are vortex flows? In order to understand how vortex flows arise, and why they are advantageous in delta wings, we will first look at them in unswept wings. It will be common knowledge that the lift experienced by wings is a result of a pressure differential along the top and bottom surfaces. This pressure differential causes the air on the bottom of the wing to want to creep around the wingtip, but it is quickly pushed behind the wing by incoming flow. 
These wingtip vortices are a source of drag, and modern jetliners make use of a variety of wingtip devices such as canted winglets, sharklets, raked wingtips, and wingtip fences to minimize the effect. How do vortex flows relate to delta wings? When a delta wing is at a relatively low speed and high angle of attack, vortices begin to form along the leading edge. Unlike the vortices on straight wing aircraft, these vortices are stable and engulf the entire upper surface of the wing. Because the flow in this region is moving relatively fast, the pressure is relatively low, producing lift. Early in the development of delta wings, this extra suction, or lift, was not foreseen, leading people to be pessimistic about the low speed performance of delta wings. This method of producing lift has the added benefit of working at very high angles of attack, often in the range of 30 degrees. It can often be seen that fighter jets use this to aid in extreme maneuvers. On a humid day, the air in this vortex often becomes visible, leading to images like these. An interesting investigation of this phenomenon was conducted by NASA called the HARV, or High Angle of Attack, research vehicle, beginning in 1987 and ending in 1996. This program consisted of three phases, 385 flights, and demonstrated the ability of a modified F-18 to be capable of stable flight at angles of attack of up to 70 degrees. Does this phenomena really apply to paper airplanes? What may be surprising is that it does. A paper named On the Aerodynamics of Paper Airplanes was presented in 2009 at the AIAA Applied Aerodynamics Conference, presenting the finding that paper airplanes do produce lift using the same vortex flow concept. Their investigation consisted of performing water tunnel tests and CFD analysis, and they found that like delta wings, paper airplanes have very good lift characteristics at high angles of attack. The phenomenon can also be clearly seen in their flow visualizations inside the water tunnel. This may be surprising to some, but fluid dynamics often has these scale-independent features. Just think of the vortex shedding behind a small cylinder and how these can be seen at atmospheric scales or even larger. After seeing this, the few orders of magnitude difference between a paper airplane and the Concorde seems somewhat unimpressive. Thanks for watching. Please realize this is only part one of a two-part series on these slender body delta wings. The next part will consist of the CFD analysis I am currently running. I have run the mesh refinement studies and now I am trying to reproduce experimental data for various aspect ratio wings at differing angles of attack. This video might take a while to come out as it is a lot of simulations to run and I am running fairly big cases of around 5 million cells. Please stay tuned. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Please like and share the video, it really helps. As always, thank you for watching, goodbye.